boy, oh boy, do we have a lot to talk about in this segment of the post senating hearing. It has been confirmed by the man in legend himself that Henry Cavill is no longer going to be playing Superman in the DC Extended Universe. Maybe he might play another DC character, but he's not going to play Superman anymore. James Gunn is also working on a young Superman movie where it follows his journey in Metropolis and his time at the Daily Planet. Now, I think that that's very interesting news. I want to revisit and expand on something that I discussed the other week, which is why the DCEU needs James Gunn leading it. Just to quickly recap, I am of the opinion that James Gunn, with his exceptional track record in the box office, will bring economic prosperity. And considering the inconsistency of live-action DC, James Gunn might finally bring some well-needed organization and rectify consistency issues. Having considered all of those variables, we still don't know the extent of the gun regime. Well, at least until a report published by The Hollywood Reporter came out a couple weeks ago. And I'm going to read a sample of the article here on the show and then share my thoughts on this development in regards to the overarching DC Extended Universe. So, the report reads, let me scroll down, okay. Multiple sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman 3 is not moving forward and is considered dead in its current incarnation. Sources say that Jenkins recently submitted her treatment co-written with Johns and that Gunn and Saffron, as well as Warner Bros. Pictures co-chairs and co-CEOs Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abdi broke the news to the filmmaker telling her the project, as it stood, did not fit in with the new, enclosed in brackets but still unfolding, plans. Jenkins directed and co-wrote the previous two movies starring Gal Gadot and released in 2017 and 2020. No decision has been made about next steps and while costs are not, and this is quite you know, important uh, to consider when we're talking about the rebirth of the DCU, insiders say that DC Studios will not have any overburdensome financial restrictions. The studio could end up saving tens of millions of dollars by making the third installment. Gadot, according to sources, was on track for a 20 million payday for Wonder Woman 3, while Jenkins would have received 12 million. Those figures don't include any possible back end bonuses. Warners had no comment. It is unclear how any future Wonder Woman film and Gadot's portrayal of the hero would fit in the new DC plan. In a bit of head-scratching timing, Gadot tweeted out of the blue a thank you to fans Tuesday, saying she was grateful to be allowed to play the heroine and role model, adding, can't wait to share her next chapter review. It was unclear whether or not the actress knew the project was being toe-tagged. The rest of the DC slate remains in flux, or at least is being kept deep in a pocket of Gunn's own utility belt, but there are several rumors and possible scenarios to consider ahead of next week's meeting. Okay guys, so I know you're bored of me reading, but pay attention to the last bit, because this is very um, pivotal. The first um, of the several rumors and scenarios, which builds on the shuttering of Jenkins' One Woman Free, is the closing curtain of the Snyderverse. 
and the heroes cast by filmmaker Zack Snyder for his Justice League, which was sheer brilliance in my opinion. This one sees the shutting down of Man of Steel 2, with and this information uh, from the report is as of this moment obsolete. So I'm just gonna continue reading, but keep in mind it mentions um, quote unquote a returning Henry Cavill. We know that obviously that's not true. Okay, this gets uh, even more interesting. Uh, continuing on with my reading, these characters are to cameo in Flash, the highly anticipated time travel adventure movie that is due to release June 16th. Okay, here's one more thing. Cavill shot his part of the cameo in September, but sources say there is a debate inside the studio as to whether or not to keep the cameo, and if its inclusion promises something that studio would have no plans on delivering. Okay, so based on what we just read here, James Gunn, you know, in my opinion, well, it's not really an opinion, because as more reports come out, it's becoming fact. James Gunn isn't just going to decanonize a few DC characters and keep the rest. James Gunn is going to straight up reboot the DC franchise as an entirety, with the exception of maybe Shazam and whatever is planned for Blue Beetle, which launches in theaters on August 18th, 2023. And also, James Gunn is planning to unveil a new slate of his rebooted DC franchise this coming New Year's. Now, you might be wondering, what are my thoughts about this change? Well, for one, I have mixed feelings about it, and I'm sure that a majority of people engaging in pop cultural discord do as well. The inconveniences when it comes to rebooting a franchise in general is, they occasionally work. Like, say what you want about Henry Cavill as Superman, but removing him from the picture is going to rile so many fans up. Not to mention how many of us who are petitioning for the continuation of the Snyderverse, we're going to be pissed as well. Well, I've kind of gotten over it, but other people are going to, you know, probably boycott Blue Beetle. Oh no, I'm so scared of your Rotten Tomato reviews. For a matter of fact, I actually think it was such an idiotic decision to not allow Zack Snyder to continue his vision, despite what is exhibited in the data. The Snyder Cut generated $650 million for DC. Are you really going to just let the Snyderverse go after such a commercial triumph? And listen, I support James Gunn's leadership of DC. I really do. And for a matter of fact, I think that sacrifices have to be made for the DCU and in the DCU for the purpose of getting back into shape. But at the same time, I am concerned about the prospect of maybe, maybe, DC is going to abandon attributes that made their mythology so unique and distinctive from the MCU. Which is all, you know, jokey jokey, colored filters, and all of that fun jazz. But I think that the DC universe in live action, now, if we're talking about the cartoons and comic books, you know, sometimes they're playful especially with Superman, but in the DC, you know, universe, we have the gritty and stoic realism of an alien like Superman living among us. How an alien like Superman restored the faith of a genocidal-driven 
Bat Vigilante. This is something that only Zack Snyder can contribute to the DC Cinematic Extended Universe. And I think that in itself deserves substantial acknowledgement. But you know, the thing is, I understand that the rebirth of the DC Universe will fix the problems that DC had in the box office. And I mean, yeah, at the same time, I have my reservations. So, oh, and I want to talk about one more thing that I just found out at the last second. And I've mentioned it um, in this segment a bit, but I want to actually talk about it now. Henry Cavill is no longer going to be playing Superman in the DC Universe. So, just to weigh in on this fresh development with four simple words. I am not impressed. Now, don't get me wrong. This could be a short-term drawback for a long-term reward. But if you assess Henry Cavill's career shift in the past few months, and considering that he dropped out of The Witcher, because he was basically guaranteed a seat in the table of the DC Universe. And then, James Gunn and Peter Safran burst in and tell him to hit the gate. And are we supposed to be, you know, are we supposed to go to Henry Cavill and, you know, James Gunn and Peter Safran burst in and told you to hit the gate. Be happy. Okay, that is so bad. I'm probably going to cut that out because that is... Blah. That didn't even... No drum shot for me. Okay. So, James Gunn and Peter Safran kicked out Henry Cavill because they have other plans, apparently. And because they don't need him anymore... They told him, look, you're not going to play Superman anymore. And I mean, listen, it must have been really awful for Henry Cavill to come to terms with this news himself. And also, we can cry and moan all we want about this latest development, but it's Henry Cavill who's going to be affected the most by this decision. Let's read a statement that Henry Cavill made to add additional context. I have just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's sad news, everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October, prior to their hire, this news isn't the easiest, but that's life. The changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build. I wish them and all involved with the new universe the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes. That sounds very classy. Good on you, Henry Cavill, for writing that. So, um, he's he also mentioned that you know, we can mourn for a bit, but then we must remember, Superman is still around, everything he stands for still exists, and yada yada yada. So anyway, this is what Henry Cavill said, which links back to the rebirth of the DC Extended Universe. Sometimes to be born again, you have to discard the old thing and replace it with something new. This is DC's born again moment, ladies and gentlemen. They're sacrificing Henry Cavill and even more money to compensate him for having to miss out on other career opportunities that we probably still don't know about. James Gunn is giving all of that up, Henry Cavill especially, for what he believes to be a more efficient future for the DC Extended Universe. So really, I am not comprehensive. I would be intrigued in reading your thoughts, opinions, and criticisms of the gun regime and the rebirth of DC. Let me know about them 
in the comment section below or our Twitter inbox at Cinema Courtroom to join the discussion today.